So it's another, uh, I don't know what it is about Fridays, where they seem to like to drop things on us on Fridays. But yesterday, the internet was lit up about a new rumor about uh, No Time to Die. I said, I can't handle this by myself, so to tackle it with me, Jack Lugo from James Bond Radio. What's going on, brother? Oh, um, a lot is going on apparently. Um, <laughs> it's it's just a uh, yeah. We it's it's been a series of crazy weekends pretty much for Bond uh, mm. and Bond fans, and uh, I think it's just taking a, a you know it's, it's taking a, a lot of time to just process everything and just sort of you know figure out what it means for the future. And I think yeah. that's what a lot of Bond fans are trying to figure out. I, I, myself being one of them, honestly, and I feel like when these things sort of come up, it, it's hard to know how much legitimacy to sort of give them, how much credence I should really be putting into these. So let's start from the top. Tell me, Jack, what is the actual rumor going around and how legit is it? And we'll sort of go from there to talk about the repercussions. So, so. Okay. So um, as you said, this is still very much in the rumor phase. Um, there's no indication that things are definitely going to go in this direction, but um, I'm excited about it because I've been writing and theorizing about this um, for a long time, for years. Mm. Um, I just I just sent you an article before. I wrote an article back in 2017 speculating what might happen uh, for the future of Bond if, if at a company like Apple or Amazon were to uh, acquire MGM and take over uh, their ownership stake uh, in Bond, because as you know, um, uh, you know the Bond, the Bond franchise is owned by two different entities. It's you know obviously everyone knows Eon Dan Jack uh, is the parent company of Eon. That's controlled by the Broccoli family, uh, Barbara Broccoli, Michael G. Wilson, mm. um, and then but then there's the other half, what used to be um, Harry Saltzman's share of the Bond franchise, and that um, is currently owned by MGM. So. So um, MGM has been in a weakened position for a long time. I mean, I, even before COVID, uh, you know, they had just begun to um, to create their own distribution company because obviously Skyfall and Spectre were distribu distributed by Sony. That required distribution deals with Sony for those films uh, because they weren't able to distribute them th themselves. But for No Time to Die, prior to COVID, they created United Artists Releasing, and that's a, a partnership with Anna Perner. And they um, they they were set to um, distribute No Time to Die in uh, in the United States domestically and. North America, Canada, um, and then and then Universal Studios was distributing No Time to Die internationally. So um, you know, along came COVID nineteen, and uh, basically all these delays happened. Right, we had the initial delay that you know because it was supposed to come out in April twenty twenty, uh, and then they pushed it back to November, and then now we've had have this new delay um, because, you know, the situation with cinemas is, you know, very volatile right now. We don't know what the state of cinema is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, even if, if they did go ahead with the November 2020 release, um, it would have, uh, you know, not made that much money. It would have probably made what Tenant made maybe a little more, uh, even with new, more theaters opening, not too many people feel comfortable going to the theaters. So, um, you know, to, to kind of cut the long story short, because I know we, we want to get to what's going on now, um, about um, a couple weeks ago, the Wall Street Journal um, did a profile on Kevin Ulrich, who is a hedge fund manager, and he owns a, a sizable share of, of MGM. He controls a sizable share of MGM. MGM is controlled by hedge funds. So mm -hmm. um, there's no actual C CEO, um, you know, the, it's it, so the Wall Street Journal did this profile on him, and in the profile, it, it indicated that he's, you know, that that there he's being pressured to to get MGM to to, to sell uh, the company of MGM to to get MGM acquired um, by a you know a big time you know someone who you know a company that a, 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 a multinational conglomerate uh, mm -hmm. like Apple or Amazon, obviously Comcast was also mentioned too. Um, so, um, this ha was about two weeks ago. And then when that story came out, I was like, well, if Apple were to acquire MGM, then that gives them the rights to the Bond franchise and to No Time to Die. They could release it however they want. I mean, it's not to say that they would completely get rid of theatrical release because obviously, 
you know, there, there is money to be made there. But with the current situation with COVID, um, it would be ideal for a shorter window and to, um, uh, you know, get it to as an enticement for their streaming service. Because as you know, Apple has their own streaming service now that they launched um, about a year ago. Um, and, um, you know, they, they're having difficulty. They don't have much of a library. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you've, uh, you're a subscriber to Apple Plus, uh, Apple TV Plus, but they, they have their own original shows. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously the morning show won a lot of awards. Uh, you know, they, mm -hmm. so they, they do have some critical standing, but they don't have much of a back catalog of, 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 of films for, you know, like, like HBO Max has, you know, the, the, the Criterion Library. They have, you know, like mm -hmm. serious film lovers can, there's a, there's a back catalog. Uh, Apple doesn't have that. So if they were to acquire MGM, they would get that catalog, uh, all the MGM films, including, you know, films like Rocky, the Rocky franchise, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, and so, so much more. Um, so um, over um, yesterday, Friday, um, this uh, rumors started circulating again. And um, this time it's, uh, uh, there was an entertainment journalist uh, by the name of Drew's, Drew McWeeny. And he tweeted that, you know, he has, uh, he, 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 um, he has a number of inside sources. He's come up with a, with a number of scoops in the past. And he, basically his sources tell him that, um, that, that, there are that Netflix and Apple are have been in negotiations with MGM to acquire the rights to, to No Time to Die, and that would just be for the standalone movie. Which mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it probably may end up being more than that because obviously we're talking about um, a very hefty price tag. Like we're talking about you know the the number he mentioned was six hundred million dollars. So um, you know, and if you put it in context. Um, you know, um, I think Spectre took in eight hundred million dollars internet, you mm -hmm. know, worldwide. So you're looking at six hundred million dollars cash that they don't have to share with anyone, because as you know, with the the, the, the with the traditional um, theatrical release, uh, obviously, you know, they're they're, they're shared. You know, it, the 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 whatever the profits are, they 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 get to split. So this would just be a six hundred million dollar cash infusion, maybe even more. Uh, so it, I mean, at this point, it, it kind of makes sense for MGM to at least consider this offer. Mm. Uh, so that's where things stand right now. It's still in the rumor phase. Obviously, we don't know if it's going to happen. Um, you know, and I've, and I get the sense, obviously, that these um, negotiations have been leaked so they weren't meant to be made public we weren't supposed to know about it so whenever something like that happens you don't know if that sort of uh sabotages the negotiations and get, they get cut off or if they continue or uh, or if they accelerate so it's it's hard to tell what's going to happen but that's where things stand right now it's like we're in this uncertain place where it's a possibility and that's what I, i'm excited about i mean i know a lot of fans um you know aren't um that keen on the idea but i think um yeah and there's a tendency to sort of frame it in a negative way like oh you know bond is a failure unless it's in cinemas and mm. you know this movie could you know if it doesn't get the proper release that it could you know um that that it could be uh, detrimental to the franchise but i think there's another way to look at it which would be that it's that it would sort of put bond in a in another stratosphere like you know it would be seen as innovative innovative and it also it would sort of it might entice younger and newer audiences who haven't you know who aren't currently bond fans it might entice them to sort of you know, invest in the franchise and and find out more about Bond and get into Bond. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that you know because of the you know Apple is as you know is is ubiquitous now. It's like it's everywhere. Um, so it's um, when you get a company like Apple involved with Bond, mm -hmm. um, I think there are a lot of possibilities possibilities that um could could happen as a result and i'm excited about it i know not too many people <laughs> there are other people who aren't too 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 excited about it but i am. <laughs> <laughs> well you know, yeah well it's funny you're just, i tell you i I'm, I'm probably the perfect guy for for you to sort of um bounce this off of because I, I you know some people will say oh i could be swayed either way but they really do have a pretty good opinion on where they want to go I'm kind of genuinely on the fence with this. I, 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 again, I there there is that part of me that is very much lamenting the the possible death of cinema, which I don't know if that's all. You know, I I don't know that that's likely yet, yeah. but certainly the threat is there. Um, 
And there is that part of me that wants to, like you said, embrace the new generation and, and possibly, I mean, the streaming, I feel like streaming at this point is, is as inevitable as the internet in the late 80s, in the late 90s. Like, I mean, it, it's like, you know, people can say what they want about, you know, ah, it'll never take off. It's, it's, I think it's an inevitability, right. uh, at least on some level. Right. So, uh, boy, so. Well, let me t let me start with this, and there's a couple things I want to get to, but I'll tr I'll try to I'll try to sort of spread them out a little bit. And there's one end up question I want to leave on, um, and it's and it's way too early for me to be doing math, but <laughs> the the 600 million. So so basically, what you're saying is that if if like if if this deal were to go through, then uh, Eon, Danjack, MGM, they get 600 million right off the bat. It doesn't matter if the film performs, doesn't perform, et cetera. It's, it's basically a guarantee payout. Right. But they still have to – I'm guessing that uh, MGM, et cetera, also has to sort of pay back certain things. Like they have, yes. they have investments that have been made into the film that they have to pay back before they get the – you know, their profit. Uh, so uh, yes, so how does that, that – yeah, also uh, Universal would have to be compensated because they are the international distributor too. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of, um, I mean, the fact that they, 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 they might have these obligations to meet um, that might even motivate them even more to, 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 to take the cash because mm -hmm. the cash would be a guaranteed thing. I mean, the success of how many people actually, you know, tune in to, you know, subscribe to whichever service, um, you know, platform it ends up on, uh, they won't have to worry about it um, the way that they would worry about box office figures during uh, a pandemic. So um, it's, it, it, you know, do we know, that, I mean, because if it did release in theaters, do we know that it would exceed 600 million we don't mm. because uh, you know even with theaters being open um you have you, you you don't know how comfortable people are going to the cinema uh and and i'm i'm with you i mean i don't want to see cinema die i mean i i i want it yeah. to return stronger than ever um but i think we're in a very unique time right now and um you know how long can we realistically just keep this film on the shelf um, you yeah. know, can we keep it on the shelf till 2022 if, if April doesn't work out? Um, so that's, I think that's kind of the thinking that we kind of need to embrace as fans. I don't know if obviously, you know, it's uncertain whether things will move forward, progress to that point. But, um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's sort of like if, if MGM can get $600 million, uh, cash, mm. um, that's a motivating factor. And then obviously there's the other possibility that Apple might circumvent this whole thing by just acquiring MGM. Uh, and then in the, in the, in the JBR blog post that I wrote, I, I, I speculated that if they, if, if they were to do that, it would be about $8 billion or, or be between $8 billion and $9 billion mm -hmm. uh, for Apple to acquire MGM. And then obviously they would just take over MGM's position um, and their, their, their rights of, of the franchise. Uh, so that's a that's a distinct possibility as well. Um, so um, yeah, it's it, I I know it's it, it's 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 a lot to process. But mm. the, uh, Apple definitely has the pockets. I mean, they have right. um, you know, and and when I researched for the article that I did, um, and obviously uh, and and Bill Koenig actually, I've, I've been bouncing off ideas with him, and he's been helping me too. Um, you know, sending me some links to, uh, some to some information, and I, they have like an like an excess of like. Forty billion dollars to yeah in cash to to yeah, yeah. I mean so they have they yeah. have more than enough to acquire to just outright acquire MGM yeah. um uh, for you know between eight and, and nine billion dollars um so um yeah these are things that we just you know obviously as fans yeah. we're just trying to figure out what what's going to happen yeah well let me let me ask you this if if they do as opposed to doing the deal you're talking about, like I said, they could just acquire MGM altogether. If they do, do they have carte blanche to do what they want? Like, can can now can they just all of a sudden now walk in and dictate? All right, it's going on Apple Plus. Thank you. Um, I don't know. That that is uncertain. I I think mm. uh, Ian. I mean, um, actually, there was another entertainment writer who um, tweeted out yesterday, and obviously, I don't know the veracity of it. I don't know who his source is but he did indicate that barbara broccoli is 
not you know not pleased uh that basically the the streamers both netflix apple told her to name her price and she said that the the price that there is no price tag that that that's that she would consider mm. but um it may be out of their hands because you know the distribution like obviously eon danjack they're they're uh very much uh you know have control over the creative aspect of 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 bond and the film and the production of the film itself but when it comes to the distribution i don't know if if uh, barbara broccoli and michael g wilson can like veto uh, mm. uh apple if they were to just acquire mgm and say okay we want to release this on apple plus i i don't know i don't want to i, I right. can't say either way mm. yeah that, that that is pretty interesting um and i i i, I guess on one hand too i mean i'm, I'm also saying to myself and even if apple did this I, I suppose it, it would be a big feather in their cap to acquire it and say the only way to see this is on Apple Plus. I mean, and like like you said, like I I am mildly familiar with the shows at Apple Plus. I mean, there was one you mentioned one the the morning show. Yeah, the morning show, which I only know because Mary uh, liked it, and I think that was literally the reason we got Apple Plus and we signed up for it. But I <laughs> I can honestly say I've never looked at it again since for anything. So it's never been my go-to for, for like you said. Um, so yeah, on one hand, it would be sort of a feather in their cap to say the only way you can see this is Apple Plus, and that might really help to launch this this product. Um, but this, the film was shot in IMAX, right. so I, I would think at some point they would have to say like it would be a complete waste to not show that. But like I you agree. said, yeah, but but we are, we are sort of doing this this dance at this point where. It is getting to be damaged goods, and I hate to sort of use that term, but, I mean, again, we had the big marketing launch, and in some of the articles that you sent me, by the way, talked about this, that we had the big marketing launch back in, in February, beginning of the year, and then leading up to November, we had another marketing launch, probably not as expensive, et cetera, but still, it's almost like, even if they're not running out of money to market this thing, they're running out of bullets. I mean, there's only so many times we can see the DB5 spin around with machine <laughs> guns going before we can still keep that excitement for it. So, yeah, I mean, they are kind of running. It, it's a race against the clock at this point. The, the film is going to lose steam. People are just going to forget that it ha they haven't seen it yet. They'll, they'll think, yeah, I mean, didn't this come out already? Those of us who are hardcore fans, obviously, will we'll go see it. But, yeah, sure. I mean, the way the film makes money is by, you know, um, getting – you know, just general movie going audiences. And yeah, like you said, um, you know, they've spent a whole lot of money on the promotional campaign and, um, you know, multiple promotional campaigns. And then it just, you know, once you have that money spent, it just sort of runs out of juice. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, and then you have all these licensees um, like Nokia, DHL, you know, all these, uh, you know, uh, deals that they made um, mm -hmm. that, yeah, you know, basically they ran their promotions already. So then are they going to run another promotion once it's time to release No Time to Die again? Mm. Um, and and is the the audience going to care the way they would if, if you know, if this was a normal, you know, if it had been released normally? Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, those are all uncertain factors, like you said. Um, the other thing to mention, though, is uh, um, there was a law that expired that, that, that prohibited um, studios and uh, production companies Companies from um, owning movie theaters, um, and uh, this might actually benefit a company like Disney, uh, where um, they could they they were prohibited from actually owning a physical movie theater and movie mm. theater chains. So uh, someone like Apple, now that that law has, has has expired, someone like Apple could, you know, take over. Um, movie theater chains like AMC or, you know, all the, these, uh, you know, um, uh, what's the other, Cinemart, uh, all, you know, the, these chains that are basically talking about possibly closing permanently. Mm -hmm. uh, so they might swoop in and, and just take over those um, uh, those movie theater chains as well. And then you have, then obviously they can do what they want. I don't think that they're going to circumvent the theatrical release entirely. Like you said, I think there is going to be a way to see this movie in a theater, um, you know, e even if Apple were to acquire it, um, mm. I think they will want they will want to have some kind of limited theatrical release, even if the even if their main motivating factor is to get it onto Apple Plus TV or whatever. I th I think they 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 might do something like a like a, a three week window, uh, which was discussed, um, which was one of the deals that um, I think um, one of the the movie theater chain companies uh, mm. made uh, with Universal that they, they reduced the theater the theatrical window to seventeen days. 
days. So they might do like a limited theatrical release where if fans really want to go to a movie theater, see it on mm-hmm. an Amex screen, like I want to do. Um, yeah. But uh, obviously during COVID, it's, it's, it's very difficult. But eventually once, uh, the, you know, if, if it becomes safe enough to do it, um, they could do that. And then, and then obviously after the three-week window, they, they put it on their service. And, you know, they still have the, the, the buzz generated from releasing a new bond film and you can mm. you know obviously like we said we can get new and younger audiences uh into bond and you know i mean there there, there there are tons of things they can do to sort of get people excited about it right no it's very true but i mean it's funny but even even as we're talking about that i'm saying to myself well i mean the other side of that coin is that like you have guys like like I, I'm, I'm listening in on the Apple conversations and they're saying, yeah, we want to get this on our streaming service. And there's somebody saying, but we still got to get this in the theaters. We still got to put it in the theater somehow, some way. And then the other guy across the table is saying, dude, if we could get it in the theaters, we wouldn't be talking. Like the whole <laughs> point is that we can't get into the theaters. So to try to tie in our launch with some sort of a theatrical release is it, it, that's not why we're here. We're here because we can't get it into the theaters, or they can't get it into the theaters. If they like, like you know, Apple is saying, if they could do it, we wouldn't be talking to them at this point. Yeah. So yeah, it's it is gonna I, like. There's a part of me that's thinking like, geez, it could be even like I, like God forbid, like let's say Apple, they're talking, they're making agreements, they're 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 making deals, and then they say, but we but we do like the theater experience. We do want to tr- tr- try to give it the pomp and circumstance it deserves. So what if we wait until the spring? And then all of a sudden something happens in the spring and there's another dust up and people start to panic and we're not going to the theaters. I mean, Apple might just say, look, look, now now we're kicking ourselves for even waiting for this. We should have just did it all along, put it on our streaming service and been done with it. So, I mean, I guess I guess basically I am sort of coping with the possibility that we might get just this film on streaming, period. You know, yeah. and, and, and like I mean, they might even do like like even like a year from now they'll do like a re-release in the theaters. Maybe they try to, maybe when things clear up, they try to reinvigorate. Like you said, maybe it's Disney, maybe it's whoever. They try to reinvigorate the studio. I mean, excuse, the theater system, and they start to put some of these movies back in the theaters that you already saw on the streaming, etc. Don't know how successful it would be, but who knows? But yeah, I, I I guess if I had to sort of hedge my bet, I would say. If Apple does get this, they're going to try to put it on streaming and do it quickly. Um, yeah, you might be right about that. I mean, I, I like, I mean, I, I during the podcast I did with James on radio, I mean, I, I, and this was before they announced the delay when it was still coming out in November. I was like, I'm not comfortable going to the theater, even though theaters are open here in New, mm. in New Jersey. I mean, have yeah. you have you gone to the theater to see Tenant or? I, I haven't, and it's funny you say. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, and it's funny you bring that up because sure, I mean, that is also a big factor. I mean, Tenant should have been. I I I don't know if I would call Tenant a tentpole movie the way you would like a Marvel film, et cetera. Right. But but surely it should have had, you know, that that could have been the theater to kick us off. I, I remember when it came out, I didn't even know which theater near me was open. I didn't know what the rules were going to be. I didn't know. So I mean, I never even bothered to see it. In fact, uh, my girlfriend and I were talking about a week ago, and she said. Boy, I haven't been to the theater in so long. I'm, I would love to go see something, and I and I quickly looked up to see what was playing, and I thought I I still saw Tenant and New Mutants that have been out for weeks now because nothing else is coming out. They were showing uh, like a, a Harry Potter movie. Like they can't <laughs> they, they can't even fill the theaters with new movies anymore, so they're just struggling to do what they can. But yeah, I I think most people probably just don't, like even if they want to see a movie, they don't even know. Like they're not even thinking. Like it, like and Tenant didn't even have. I don't I, I don't remember seeing a single commercial for Tenet. So there was hardly the big marketing blitz to, to try to bring people out to see it. So Yeah, I did I, I I've seen a couple commercials for Tenet, but it's like uh the one commercial I saw was like it's the number one movie in the country. I'm like, well it's the, <laughs> it's the only yeah. movie in the country, aside from yeah. like New Mutants, which yeah. obviously isn't in the same kind of stratosphere as right. as as uh as Tenet because of the yeah. you know, Christopher Nolan. Um but yeah, I, I, I'm just I, I'm very reluctant to go back to the theaters. I mean, mm-hmm. what was the last movie you saw? In the theater? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. I, you know what? It could have been like Knives Out. I I, I, yeah. I probably because I remember because I do a, I you know I I just sort of kicked it off again, but I do a whole separate podcast that's the strict movie review podcast. And and I remember at the end of last year we sort of and this was before COVID 
we we kind of had made a decision, especially because everything with Bond was dusting up and it was really going to consume my attention. And I, I so we decided we decided to put that aside for a little while. But I remember at the very least doing like you know trying to see as much as I could in the theater up until the end of 2019. And probably honestly, Knives Out was probably one of the the last ones I saw in the theater before. And I, I don't think I've seen a single movie in the theater in 2020. Yeah, the the last movie I, I saw Knives Out um, that came out last year, and I saw uh, The Invisible Man, and that was right oh, before think, the theater. I, you closed. know what? I that, I I think I saw that one as well, and I think you're right. That might have been. And the that last was one a, well. and that was a good movie. It was. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know at the time that that would be the last movie I'd see for a long yeah. time. But uh, sure. it, it, it was a good movie. I just don't know what the state of cinema is going to be like in April. I, it's just I, I, it's hard to yeah. imagine that it's going to go back to normal. I mean, even if even if things yeah. improve, um, you, you're going to have to still have like a mask mandate. And, you know, who wants to sit in a theater with the with a mask on? Yeah. And, then, you know, obviously, you know, they, they want to sell you the concessions. So people have to take their masks off to eat and, right. and drink. And, and, right. and no it's one like, is going to well, wear a mask during. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like. You know, and obviously, you know, things are even though they've they've improved relatively, you know, in our area, um, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's still, you know, very precarious around the country. We still, mm-hmm. you know, we we just broke the record for the number of cases um, on Friday. Actually, uh, there were over seventy seven thousand new cases of covid around the country. So it's mm-hmm. it's it's still very much a threat so it's like i don't know i mean i know cuomo recently um allowed movie theaters in the in new york state to open but I, but they're still going to remain closed in new york city which is obviously mm. a major hub uh and same in california california you could there are areas in california where you can where theaters are open but la remains closed yeah uh, so um yeah it's just i i don't know i mean it's mm-hmm. i that's why i think this apple thing um realistically if you know could happen I mean, and I know I've I've been theorizing and writing about it for a long time. And every time, you know, prior to COVID that that I've kind of gone down this road, I always get a group of fans who are like, oh, it's never going to happen. You know, why are you wasting your time writing about it? (laughs) And now here we are. Um, I I think it's I think we just have to sort of be open. Like we have to sort of be open to the, the possibility that, you know, maybe this is the best way for us to 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 get to see the movie yeah. and um, also um, the best, the, the maybe it's, it, 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 you know, instead of uh, keep, you know, putting it in a negative in a negative framing, mm. we could sort of spin it in a positive way. It's like, well, you know, maybe this will entice younger people to, to, mm. you know, to, to to get into bond you know maybe um yeah. and obviously if someone like apple were to take over to and M- M- mgm there are other possibilities too that like obviously we could we can get more content more frequently because we're, we're now we're down to like you know every a bond film every five years um so <laughs> it's, <laughs> and so if someone like apple were to take over um you have um you know you can, maybe we can get something every two years um mm. you know uh or or they could expand the Bond universe, or they could even explore doing period Bond, you know, doing mm. like the 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 adaptations of the Fleming novels, or they can even do Young Bond, uh, or they uh, and there are different things that can exist at the same time, kind of yeah. like, you know, um, you, you know, so yes, the the major, you know. Uh, obviously, the main part of why we're all into Bond is uh, is 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 for the Bond character. But right. you know, if there's a way to expand it and 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 sort of introduce new you know new threads, new story threads, new characters, yeah. um, you know that that could complement Bond, um, and they do it in a way that works. Um, yeah. I would be open to that too. So I mean, there there are new possibilities. It just depends on what you know if. Uh, obviously this happens and obviously we don't know really what how eon you know about barbara broccoli and michael g wilson would react and how they feel about um all this uh so a lot of this is just speculation but i think it's it, i mean as fans we, yeah that's all we could do is really speculate mm. yeah well i'll tell you you know you're 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 getting into the area that now i'm, I'm sort of most curious about because I'm saying to myself, well, look, let, let's say, I mean, Skyfall was, was it broke a billion dollars. Like Skyfall was a billion dollar movie, and like as you said, I, th- I believe Spectre was about like it was eight hundred, it was like eight hundred and eighty. It was, I think, it was just shy of like a nine hundred. You know, it, w- it was probably headed to be another billion dollar movie, except it wasn't really as good, and it didn't get probably as good word as mouth, word of mouth. Um, but 
I would venture to guess that if if I'm Eon and Dan Jack and I'm I'm looking at No Time to Die and I'm saying we we definitely got another billion dollar movie here. This is definitely on par with Skyfall. I think people are gonna love it. Uh, the marketing is great and and it's gorgeous looking. It's it's definitely gonna be a billion dollar movie. So maybe as they're in that negotiating room and they hear six hundred million, well that's fine. That's good and that that does. Um, probably gets us to where we can at least cover our losses, pay out what we need to pay out, you know, pay back the investors, et cetera. Um, but I'm also saying to myself, well, what if they're sitting there saying, well, 600 million is fine, but honestly, we, we really were banking on a billion dollars and we, and we invested accordingly, so we need more. Maybe Apple comes back and says, well, what we could do is start talking about the, the rights to James Bond after Bond 25. And maybe now if that's thrown into the mix, maybe that starts to maybe now we start getting closer to a billion dollars because now we get the rights to the future films. Now, if I'm if I'm Barbara and Michael, I'm saying to myself, well, I, I mean, I shouldn't I shouldn't try to try to speculate what they're thinking. But but I but what we can say is that it's been five plus you know, we're, we're going on six years, calendar years now since the last film. They're not exactly chomping at the bit to do another Bond film. Maybe they're saying to themselves, look, we need an exit strategy anyway. So yeah. maybe, like you said, maybe the rights to future films goes with it. And now we have a different generation of young blood, uh, hopefully fans, et cetera, who might pick up the mantle and start going forward. And like you said, could could branch out in more than one direction. Yeah, um, I, it's hard to kind of speculate what what. Mm the eon people are thinking so yeah. it's um so i could i could definitely see them saying well you know yeah i mean we're used to kind of taking a break after we release a film and now yeah. if this apple deal happens are they going to expect us to sort of launch into another era of bond because obviously now with daniel being done it, you know everyone's going to talk about okay who's going to be the next bond what are they going to do next and how long is it going to be before we get the next bond project um those are all things that they have to kind of consider and like you said maybe apple you know if even if they don't acquire mgm they'll say okay uh you know this movie would have made a billion dollars uh, if it was a normal if we were living in normal times mm -hmm. um if we if we control the bond franchise going forward um and can launch new bond projects um you know, after Bond 25, after No Time to Die, then maybe, maybe it's worth investing a billion dollars um, to in, into acquiring this. Um, that's a that's a good possibility. Um, and then, you know, who knows? You know, obviously there are a lot of things they could explore um, in terms of expanding the franchise too. So this way, even once you have a new Bond, um, a Bond, a new Bond actor, and a new the next Bond 26, you mm -hmm. have you have you can have other projects around it to sort of. Um, you know, complement it and sort of tie into it, um, mm. which, you know, obviously uh, would be a, a, you know, a, a risk, but I think it would be a relatively good risk because obviously, you know, I think Bond fans, we all want more content now. It's like we're, 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 we're kind of, you know, this whole thing of like having to wait five years <laughs> is, is, yeah. is, is uh, a lot of people, you know, are, are not on board with that. They want to, to have something at least to yeah. tie you know to and i think i mean there are clever things they can do like obviously if you're getting a new bond actor uh and you're launching the series you can reimagine what the universe of bond would be for for that actor's run and sort of plan it out in a way that you can sort of build sort of a you know an expanded universe kind of concepts around it that would tie into what you're going to do with mm -hmm. bond 26 yeah it, it is, you know, it's funny. I mean, honestly, like, I feel like this is the moment where your brain just sort of goes like in seven <laughs> different directions. And, you know, like I'm I'm, I'm all, already picturing, I'm saying to myself, it's funny, like we're living in a world now where you never would have thought you would have saw this day, but we have multiple incarnations of Batman's universe happening right. in the cinema at the same time. We've got multiple Jokers, multiple Batmans, and no one even knows how they sort of connect to each other. Um I I, I, I kind of say to myself, boy, I'd be on one hand, it would be exciting. On the other hand, terrifying the idea that they could do something like that with James Bond, because then you know maybe we'd have a. I mean, like I I say to myself, like like 
boy, I, I think if Apple had the opportunity to take the Bond novels and sort of do them as a series set back in that time frame, I mean, my girlfriend and I just finished watching a series on Netflix called Ratchet, which is oh, based yeah, on. Oh, yeah, I want to watch that. Yeah, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That's like right. A... Yeah. Right, right. Based on based on a side character from a film that anybody <laughs> under forty probably doesn't even know, and they took and they made a whole series out of it. It was pretty good, by the way. It was it was not not perfect, but it was very good. Um, so I'm, I mean, if they're clamoring for, I mean, and Netflix and all these that they've for quite a while have been clamoring for content. I mean, I would think somebody would jump at the idea to, to be able to take James Bond and to do something with him in terms of a series. Yeah, I mean, if you have if you think about it. You know, and I guess because I'm I'm sort of the, the the comics guy over at James Bond Radio, Bond was a comic before he was a film. Right. Like you, you had the, the you had the the, the McCluskey uh, comic uh, adaptations of Casino Royale, uh, and you had you know you had these ongoing you know you had so back in the '60s uh, you had um, you know Bond as a comic even before he was a film, uh, mm. and obviously Sean Connery actually resembled McCluskey's Bond more than the literary Bond. So yeah. you had um, you had that kind of like you know the multiple kind of mediums for mm. this franchise in the past um yeah. and obviously with comic with current comic books like you like you said with batman they, they're shooting the one with robert pattinson now and then they're bringing ben affleck project and um and then you, they're bringing jared Leto, leto's um uh joker for yeah. for another project um so multiple things could sort of exist at the same time they don't have to kind of occupy the same universe but i think you know movie fans and pop culture fans are, are now getting used to the idea that you, you don't have to have just one set of, you know, like just one direction that you, that, that, that the franchise has to go in. You can mm. explore different avenues and, um, you know, different um, you know, sensibilities, different ways to sort of um, explore the same franchise uh, mm. and they can coexist and they don't necessarily have to, inter you know, like, um, you know, interweave with each other uh, because I doubt, obviously, the Ben Affleck Batman project is going to interweave with the Robert Pattinson. Um, mm. They can sort of coexist at the same time. And then you just kind of have to, when you see one project, you, you know that this is, okay, this is the universe, this is the Bond universe I'm watching right now. Um, it's, you know, Bond 26 with starring, you know, whoever they choose. And then let's say they do, um, you know, a lot, uh, 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 um, uh, the period Bond mm. on, on Apple TV, you know, like they, they, they adapt Casino Royale, just the, the novel, ver the Fleming Casino Royale uh, from the novel, and, and that's just a period piece, you know, set in like 1952, um, and and then you have period Bond, and mm. you know, even though you have these multiple projects, you can sort of, you know, it doesn't take that much brain power to just say, okay, I'm watching this project, I'm watching the period Bond now. This is what Bond is for this universe, mm. and now, um, you know, and then tomorrow I'm going to watch, you know, Bond 26, and that's present day, and it's a, it's a different you know, iteration of Bond that that's, mm. you know, and both are, are relevant and you can both get whatever you can get out of them as a fan. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think, you know, there, there are multiple ways that you can, you know, kind of approach it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we, I, I I have no problem getting used to that idea. I know there are a lot of older Bond fans that was like, you know, they, they, they're, you know, that they might initially be against it, but maybe I think that there's a way to sort of please. Yeah. You know, I know that, you know, the phrase is you can't please everyone, but maybe you can, you know, mm. because, you know, it, maybe, you know, uh, whatever they decide to do with um, present day Bond, Bond 26, it may not be to their liking, but, you know, what they, if they do a period bond, maybe that's something that they can, you know, so you can kind yeah. of pick and choose, you know, um, which iteration of bond uh, you would like if it goes in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It is a fascinating question because I, 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 I say I wonder to myself, I think as far as the printed page is concerned, I think uh, fans are pretty willing to they're open to a lot of things, whether it be. Uh, comics, one of which you just sort of turned me on to, which I sort of been overdue to check it out, yeah. um, and 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 even the the subsequent novels. I mean, the novels we've had of the last, I mean, the post Benson novels have been all over in terms of like modern or set in a different time period, et cetera, et cetera. Before Casino Royale, after Casino Royale, et cetera. So they're very open to things. I think as far as the page goes, 
big screen or small screen, I, I wonder if they're going to be quite as open or just quite as embracing. But I think I, I, I do. I, I sort of agree with what you're saying. Once they see it, once they sort of get it and can kind of like, all right, let me check this out. I think they might be more open to it. My, my, I'll tell you, my concern for cinema really does still stay because I say to myself, you know, it's. I mean, if 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 any company could shut its doors for six months and say, okay, you know, we're going to go to Tahiti for six months and take a long vacation, and we're just going to open up in in six more months as if nothing had happened. If they could do that, they would. You know, companies can't just shut down and, and open back up. So I, I I am still worried about the future of of the big screen with all this going on. But like you said, I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, fingers crossed as far as that goes. But, uh, but I do think, again, I, 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 I take comfort in the fact just knowing, I mean, the film exists no matter what, yeah. you know, <laughs> we'll no matter how eventually. we get it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's right. It is, this, it's the same movie regardless. Like this is not yeah. the Snyder cut. They're not, they're not tinkering with it. Yeah. You know, it's done. It's ready. So at some point we're going to get it. It's just a matter of how. Yeah, I mean, I, and one of the things I kind of emphasized in my in, in one of my last JBR article too is that um, when I think about it, I've been exposed to Bond on TV than I have in the movie theaters because, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I've seen, you know, I mean, pretty much all the Brosnan since the Brosnan films, like starting with GoldenEye, obviously I've yeah. seen them all in the movie theaters, mm. but all the ones that are, you know, uh, everything that came before that, I mean, I, I you know, I'm I'm 40 years old, so 41. Right. And, um, and so I, I've seen, you know, obviously all the Rogers and the Daltons and yeah. obviously Majesties. The, I, I've watched and, and uh, you know, I, I've watched all of those for the first time on TV, yeah. um, you know, VHS tapes yeah. or if they, if they were broadcast. Right. Uh, so um, some, if not most, you've probably only seen on, on the small screen. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this idea that, OK, it ruins it if you're if you're watching it only on the small screen yeah. or only on your TV at home. And most of us have pretty big screens uh, now compared to the what they were in the 80s and stuff. Um, so the idea that it has to be cast in a negative light, if that's were, were the case, I, I, I'm just I, I just don't get it. It's like, OK, I, yeah. I'm OK watching it on, on TV uh, at home. Um, yeah. You know, it's I, that's how I've watched most of the the bond films sure um, so it, <laughs> right most of it right, but most of us will see it once on the big screen and then 27 more times on our small screen that's totally true yeah yeah it yeah I, i'm with you there is like i am asking myself is it really now because i've also had this debate personally myself is like like let's say no time to die came out and somebody literally said okay here's what's going to happen on this date it's going to be released in the theater down the street, and it's going to be released on streaming. You can literally watch it either way. I would honestly be hard pressed to, you know, in deciding how I'd want to watch it for the first time. Because I mean, when you go, and I hate to say this, and as much on, you know, I feel like I'm talking out both sides of my mouth. As much as I love the big screen experience, it's also a little risky sometimes. Sometimes you go, there's problems. Yeah. Sometimes you got loud people. It's, Even before COVID, yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, exactly. Even on a good day, sure. Yeah. You're sort of risking. I mean, I, it's gotten to where I feel like it's it's almost like, I wouldn't say a 50-50 chance, but maybe like a 70-30 that, you know, you're going to go <laughs> see the film with other people who just want to watch the film and nobody's making noise. There's no, no, and even, even by accident, just disruptions happen, et cetera, or just even the concession is something that's not quite right. You're watching it at home, like you said. Most people these days have a nice big screen, probably have, if, if you're an audiophile, you have nice speakers, you can make a nice dinner, you can make drinks, you can do whatever. You can watch it in your pajamas if you so choose. So, yeah, I mean, there is kind of that, too. Like, I, I, I can see, I can see the, the, the pluses in both, both camps. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, I, no way do I want theaters to disappear. But at the same time, given if I were to have that same choice, I, I would, I would probably choose to to watch it at home. You know, I mean, it, it's it's I I I just think, um, you know, like you said, that there, there there are so many risk factors involved. Even if you're even setting aside COVID, sure. um, you know, like you said that you know. You have disruption sometimes if you're watching like a like a like 
something like a Marvel film where you know, you know, you're going to have young kids there, uh, you know, or somebody takes their their infant to the theater, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And doesn't 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 spring for a babysitter, um, and <laughs> it just sort of ruins that first that initial viewing experience for you. Mm. Um, it, it's um, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, like like you know, I I. Obviously, I, I you know I loved I used to love going to the theater. I still would love yeah. to go back to the theater. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there was a time back when I was in college, I would you know see go to the movies like twice a week or something like that. Um, so I, I, you know, it's it's it, it's not something that I want to go away. But at the same time, yeah. you know, you know the times that we live in and what's going on now with COVID, I don't really feel safe. And obviously, you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different circumstances. I happen to live with family members who would, who are in the vulnerable group. So even if I were yeah. to go and feel relatively safe for myself, I, I can't vouch for what I might bring home. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's, 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 um, you know, it, it's a strange time. It certainly is. It certainly is. So, so, uh, so basically if I had to put you in one column or the other, you, are you, you are definitely leaning toward that if, if Apple does sort of do this deal, it could be a sweet, sweet thing for everybody. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I'm kind of in, I, I want to, yeah. I mean, I, I do, you know, obviously monitor what people have been saying. Um, and you know, most of people, a lot of fans will uh, want to cast this, in a negative way. And I'm, I'm like, well, I, I want to, I actually think of it as a positive thing. You know, I mean, mm. I, I, I mean, obviously we don't want movie theaters to, 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 to go out of business. That's not, um, and obviously, uh, bond does deserve to be seen on a big screen, but, um, you know, we're, we've reached a point where, you know, it's either more delays, um, uh, mm. you know, maybe pushing it back to 2022, um, you know, if April doesn't happen or, you know, see, or if someone like Apple can swoop in and, and, you know, get a deal done, then, mm. you know, I, I, I would be happy to see, uh, what Apple will do with it. And obviously, and I'm, and I would be excited to see if, app, if there's some kind of deal going forward, uh, with Apple, if, if they were to, um, you know, acquire MGM or if they acquire the film, you know, the future, rights to bond uh in some way um i would be excited to see what they would they would do with it yeah I, it, it is we are definitely in in uh uncharted times my friend it, it is, <laughs> it's i i feel like honestly we're we're kind of you know my reference back to the late 90s and the the, the birth of the internet i i kind of feel like we're kind of right back there where it is sort of a, a change and it's a matter of you know how we're going to embrace things going forward how do we navigate you know the, the streaming culture etc and and we can either be right i mean the, the, this this development could either mean a little dismissiveness for this film or it could be the dawn of a new era that we've kind of embraced and and pioneered in some ways yeah i mean it might it might just be accelerating something uh you know something that was going to happen anyway yeah. um you know so that might be one way to look at it too is that you know obviously um you know it, it and obviously with the uh, before covid the price of going to the theater had been going up and uh a lot of people you know to take a family to to the movies to see like one of these a Marvel film, you know, it, 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 it started to get prohibitive. And I mean, yeah. I, I was a fan of, of actually, you know, going to the theaters to enjoy like dramas and like, you know, films yeah. that you wouldn't, you know, that aren't these blockbuster superhero films. And yeah. those kind of, kind of fell up by the wayside. I mean, Martin Scorsese released his, his film up via Netflix last year. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, so in a way, the, the theatrical experience has sort of dampened a bit over time, even before all this happened, because they yeah. because of the dominance of these like superhero movies, and you know the and obviously you know some of them are really really good. Um, I, obviously Black Panther was was great, um, but but then like when it just becomes you know one superhero movie after the next after the next after the next and then you know the, the more kind of prestige dramas get kind of full of full by the wayside mm -hmm. and you know and then you eventually get around to seeing them but it, you know you, it, it's hard to get to see them in the theaters the way you used to because you know you're always kind of 
you have, you have these big blockbuster films that you have to that you want to in order to keep up with, with pop culture you, you want to go ahead and go see first yeah. so um yeah it, and maybe this kind of is evening the playing field you know uh mm. in a way. yeah yeah I, I i yeah okay i mean it's a lot to think about and, and thank you for doing this brother because this was <laughs> it was like i said i was i was struggling to sort of sort my own thoughts out on this and i think we've <clears throat> this is this has been very helpful and i, I yeah I, i'm rooting for cinema i i also acknowledge the streaming and i think um again this could be handled correctly it could be a, a the dawn of a very good thing for the future of james bond even um not just not just movies but um uh, so yeah i guess we'll keep watching and uh, we should we should uh, do this again and come back and watch as things develop yeah, no, we'll we'll see what happens. Obviously, we don't know. You know, I mean, everything yeah. is kind of. Uh, I, for all we know, you know, things could improve, and April will happen. And you know, um, but you know, in the back, even if that were the case, um, in the back of my mind, it would, I'll be like, well, what would have happened if Apple were to, uh, you yeah. know, got had gotten involved? And maybe at some future point they will. I mean, yeah. so um, it. Uh, and I know MGM. Uh, there was a recent Bloomberg art- article where MGM officially stated that the film is not for sale uh but um yeah. you know I, I in my conversation you know I, I chatted a little bit with bill koenig and uh he was saying that you know basically when it's amazing that they even first of all made a comment because normally they don't comment at all they, they just let yeah. stories like that you know go and they they they, they don't offer a comment but the, co- the the fact that they commented at all is pretty amazing and then um when they deny something it's usually um um as bill told me it's usually they're just denying it for this very moment in time right, 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 <laughs> so right, like yeah. the, so the mgm yesterday said the film <clears throat> for sale but that doesn't mean that the film won't be for sale tomorrow next week sure next- <laughs> you know, yeah. so um yeah. you know you take the denial with a grain of salt and that's why i think all this you know the, the fan chatter has been uh you know um accelerating as well yeah no very true very true everything everything is every, everything is for sale if the number's right at right. the end of the day and, and yeah. you think about it 600 million dollars i mean you, you got to imagine they're at least considering it uh, sure. I mean, it, and maybe like you said it ends up being more than 600 maybe it ends up closer mm. to a billion if there are other things uh attached to it uh so um yeah yeah it, we'll, we'll have yeah. to see yeah absolutely all right brother thank you so much again and well, like i said we'll, we'll come back and we'll we'll do some uh i, I think the rest <laughs> will come back and look at it again all right thanks jim <laughs> thanks jack good yeah. luck over at james bond radio thank you